Messiah, I believe you still have some ground to cover. How how much more? How <laughs> many At least more, sixty episodes, I think. <laughs> yeah. How many more intros do I owe? Uh, Until it just feels right. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody needs have to do roles. the math again. Until you feel like you've learned your your uh, your lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make you smoke all these cigarettes, Kaya. <laughs> Um, hey, welcome to episode 101, where we come to you from a safe house bunker in on Christmas Island. All cozied up here at almost 1 a.m. German time. How is everybody? How's your boys' week been? Oh, fantastic. Awesome. Who cares you for about, asking, Kyle? Who cares about this episode, man? We had our big episode 100 celebration. Now it's, like, All the what, Patreons the- left. There's yeah. no one left anymore. It's all downhill. There, no more fan art. The, the show's just like <laughs> over by this point. This is just bonus commentary DVD tracks. No one gives this a is, shit. Yeah, this is the epilogue. Yeah. The director's cut that no <laughs> one cares about. Yeah, the, the bonus scenes that people watch on the fucking Blu-rays. Whatever. Do people still watch Blu-rays anymore? I thought that was dying as well. It's a collectible. Yeah. I, I collect Blu-rays. People still God, buy them, awful. but... I mean, people still buy them, but they're definitely not the primary way anymore with streaming. I think the only people who buy Blu-rays are pirates, so they can upload it the day it comes out. (laughs) That's a good point. I call them heroes. I uh I miss I miss how they used to just jam pack every like Blu-ray and DVD with all these features to convince you to buy it like bullshit. Like I I distinctly remember the uh what's the comic book movie. Where there's Scott no color. Pilgrim. No, not Scott Pilgrim. The one where there's no color Sin in the world. City. It's Sin City, yes. If you watch the Sin City DVD, one of the DVD features is the director teaching you how to make a quesadilla. Hmm. And I, I remember watching that as a kid, and I was like, man, this is some useless bullshit. Was it in and black and white they, as well? No, it was just like a behind the scenes, like he starts What the fuck cooking. is the point of that? Exactly. So it's not even in but it's universe. A DVD fee- it's a DVD extra, so you that's get to- the, That's what I was thinking about. Someone in the chat, someone in the Discord chat, uh, full disclosure, we're, we're recording this on Discord at the moment, so there's a live audience. Someone said the Harry Potter DVDs had games on it, and I was just yeah. about to say that. Yeah. They had this really cool maze game in, in the fourth one where you <laughs> had to uh, navigate through a maze. I, I really like that. I miss when the, the DVDs had to convince you to buy them and put down the money so they had all these fucking bonus things that you would just fiddle around with after you watched the movie. They were great. <laughs> I don't yeah. know why anybody still buys <clears throat> physical things, really, other Orders. than for reasons of piracy and copyright protection being annoying, maybe. Like, you can listen or watch to your Blu-ray if you don't have internet, if it cuts out or something, which you can't do on Netflix. But other than that, I don't get these people who buy physical games for their Nintendo DS, for example. Well, Kai, oh, yeah. there's nothing quite like pushing down a nice Blu-ray onto your DVD player and just hearing that <laughs> click. <laughs> hearing it you snap just, into place. I guess. I, I mean, I, I understand it's a collector's thing, but isn't it just so much nicer to have your entire library on an SD card? So you can just, you know, SD if I'm card. on the plane, I'd... Yeah, you can put a mini SD card into your DS for an, uh, yeah. sorry, your Switch. I keep calling both, it the DS. Both, actually, yeah. Yeah, and so if I'm on a plane, I can just switch back and forth between 100 games if I want to without having to change a game cartridge. I think that's cool. I think that's far easier. I think it's the cool fun in that. Carrying around a luggage full of DS games. <laughs> <laughs> Check out my collection. I'm like Seto Kaibo with a fucking briefcase full of <laughs> DS games instead of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The fucking those old school protective cases for handheld consoles. <laughs> yeah, little I, cartridge I mean, but, spaces, padded, the, padded like you're carrying diamonds inside. There's so many purists out there though that are like, oh, I need the physical media. I don't want to just download it. I want to own it. It's like fuck that. If I'm gonna have a library of I don't know, realistically, after a couple of years, like 30 games, I, I don't want to have to, you know, dig through and flip open fucking cartridges and think, oh, which games do I want to bring on a trip? It's like, no, yeah. I'm in the Game, future. Games I especially want- make no sense now since they all require like day to day updates to keep keep online yeah. and shit like that. There's no point in the mm. physical media it's for like that. I'm, I'm in the fucking future. I want to be able to bring my switch on a plane and then halfway through getting bored of Breath of the Wild, just go, oh, you know, I think I'll play Mario. Without having to do anything, 
Exactly, right? yeah. And also, even the games, from what I hear these days, you have to download a day one patch that's twice as big as the Blu-ray anyway. Yeah, that's what so I'm I, saying. Exactly. I'm not really seeing the point of, hey, I, ha- I just bought whatever, Red Dead Redemption. Oh, shit, I have to download 60 gigabyte patches for this. Oh, and man. Maybe it's uh, like Fallout and the game deletes itself, even if you do have a <laughs> CD. Wait, was the, that uh, Oh yeah, the beta, the beta. Yeah. Yeah. The best uh point. the best impl- the best fucking argument for that I saw is you remember when Grand Theft Auto 5 came out and no. uh it launched I think simultaneously on on the current gen, the Xbox One and PS4 and then also PS3 and 360. No, 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 no. no. It didn't come out on the same uh, No. It didn't? The the first gen came out first and then okay. they But I I, I distinctly do later. remember when it came out for the first gen. You even if you bought the CD, you still had to download and save like a 100 gigabyte file. Not even a patch. Just when you put the CD in, it had to do that. It's like, what the fuck's the point of the CD by this point? Just save the whole game. You get box art. Oh, well, <laughs> and manuals. Right, sometimes actually, no manuals are gone now. No, as well. manuals have been gone forever. <laughs> yeah. Even even Nintendo, who used to be like the whole old school shit, literally their menus just say, "Go to Nintendo.com for help with this product," and that's it. So lame. I love the old school manuals. I do too. I mean, they don't really serve a purpose though, except for collecting. Yeah. That, no, that you brings get up art a. Books. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Well, art books are different. Art books you can just buy, and they, I don't, they're just art. Do you guys remember strategy guides? Oh, of course. Mm, yeah. Do you remember? You remember Those unofficial cool. ones? Unofficial ones where it was just people who played the game and wrote down what they did as like I'm talking about facts. Yeah, it's yeah. just game facts. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm talking. You don't remember like when Pokemon was big and everyone was cashing in on it. You'd have a strategy guide that was written by like this is Dan Steckelson and he loves these games. <laughs> and literally, all you would do is write down what he did and say this is the official strategy. Like, make sure you pick Charmander because I did. You know what I mean? You don't remember, I don't remember those? those? I mean, I, I know with like oh. Fortnite, like I own the unofficial, yeah. <laughs> totally unauthorized <laughs> strategy guides, but I don't think that's the same thing you're talking about. No, there, there's this strategy guide out there. It was a big one. It, it's called like uh, the the fucking ta- something Tales of Pikachu, and it's this dude who tried to play off a Pokemon strategy guide officially, but all he did was play the game and write down what happened to him and try to pass it off as a strategy. And he's all like, make sure you pick Charmander and only use Charmander. And then by the end of the game, your Charmander will be so fucking overpowered and overleveled, it'll be easy. Now, is this like a physical thing or is this online? Yeah. No, it was a book. It was a real book. It was a big ass thick book, too. It's a whole story. Oh, can't say I ever knew that black market existed, but that's kind of cool to know. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. There were a bunch of strategy guides back then. If they weren't like Prima Games or any of the officially licensed shit, it was literally just people who would just play the game and then write what they did and pass it off as like, this is the ultimate way to beat the game. You can't lose. You needed it, though. Back then, especially. Mm. Do do those lunatics... Are there any lunatics out there that actually buy uh, these guides, though? I don't understand how they're still making money. or Back in the day... They're not. Yeah. They, they haven't. Ma- I don't think Prima's has made a, a strategy guide since Grand Theft Auto Three. But no, they they absolutely have. I've seen them. No, around. I don't think well, so. It's like grannies buy them for their nephews and such. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, there's one for Red Dead Redemption too. I mean, you Re- <laughs> wait for from Prima strategy guides. There's yep. still Prima Games. They call themselves now. I, I mean, I, I, I kind of. You guys. I kind of understand it. It's like if you're if you're um, playing, I don't know. Say you have your console set up in the living room or something, and you, that's your only TV. Instead of having to flip through your phone <laughs> or your tablet or find your laptop to look at a strategy guide, just having a book right there. I kind of I get for some people why they'd prefer it, but it's definitely yeah, the most suboptimal way of doing oh, it. Of just some yeah. vague text. That's, I mean, then again, there's people who want to hold physical books as opposed to like an e-reader or their tablet. So, I mean, some uh, some people prefer it. I don't think it's the right choice, but I get why I, some people like it. I still I think, think it's just a collectible thing. Yeah. No, <laughs> who the hell wants to collect guides? That makes him look like a gigantic loser. Like, look at this collection of games because I couldn't beat any of them by myself. (laughs) Did you guys ever? uh, Did you guys ever read strategy guides as a kid for games you couldn't afford? Yeah, 
No, uh, I did it for I the did art. All, I did that all the fucking time when I was a when I was a wee, a wee boy. My uh, my parents were going through a bit of a slump with money, so so I only got games like on my birthday, on Christmas, or maybe sprinklings throughout the year. So anytime oh, a new game that survive? I I know it was terrible, um, but <laughs> eating nails for breakfast and motor oil <laughs> to wash it down. You only got me every AAA game, uh, just like five times a year. I didn't get all I got was the indie games that year. Only a oh, few AAA's. It was a real rough time. But uh, whenever a game would come out that I couldn't get because I didn't have the console or any of that shit, I would just go to Barnes and Noble and go to their strategy guide section, just read the guides for games I didn't know. Oh. Because I just that's wanted like to a, see like what would happen and all the modes and everything. Uh, that's the next level YouTube. of the poor kid looking into the window of a shop yeah, watching TV. Was. I mean, keep in mind it was really Reading before YouTube. Summary. It was it was long before YouTube or online game footage really became a thing. So it was the most you got in some cases for certain games. Well, yeah, back then that's what I was about to say. You needed it. Yeah. I like to say that games today are way too easy, and I'm sure that's true to a degree, but back then, they were also way too hard. I, could, I wouldn't ever fucking play the first five Mega Man games without an emulator. It's frustrating. It would take me a year to beat anything. Yeah. I, I think the biggest culprit of that was early Nintendo 64 games. The, that shit was so fucking cryptic for its time. Yeah, incredibly a, cryptic. Like Majora's of, Mask was goddamn impossible for children. What a lot of people don't realize is, while I, while I am on board with the fact that people say games have gotten easier, that's true. the The upside is they've gotten more time efficient. Because sometimes difficulty just meant, hey, you died. Now you have to redo this level for twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's a bit of a trade off where people don't remember that old games they just used to not give a shit. They were like, hey. You paid full price for this. This is your only fucking game. You know, we don't have... We're, it's not a big game. We don't have a ton of memory to work with. So we're just going to make you redo everything when you die. You know? You don't have that these days. You have, like, oh, try again, because there's tons more content. Yeah. I, I much prefer modern video games. I, I like that there's a, a general formula that just works really well. I just wish there was more creativity with it a little bit in terms of, like, storylines and mechanics. Mm-hmm. What general formula are you talking about? Like all shooters follow the same control mapping for the most part. What do you, what well, do you expect them to change up there? Well, no, no, I, Jackson, that's not what I'm you... saying. I'm saying that's what I like about it. I'm back back then. Like take for example, Nintendo 64. Perfect Dark Zero was having you like fucking ride a bicycle while hitting A B at the same time to perform a special action. <laughs> Jackson, you got to remember W A S D for keyboard games wasn't even standard until like the 2000s. Playing games, with, playing shooters before then without that shit, it feels barbaric. Like, what the fuck are they thinking? But I don't get why you're saying that they lack creativity then. Are you expecting them to change up their control mapping as a part of creativity? That's quite the contrary of what I said. I meant creativity <laughs> in terms of, like, genre. In terms of, like, a, take, for example, early Xbox days. Every game that came out was so vastly different from each other. Like, you'd have Psychonauts come out on the same day that Halo 1 would come out on the same day that Command and Conquer, uh, Red Dawn, or whatever the fuck it was called. Shit like that. Whereas now it's shooter, 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 uh, maybe, maybe fighter. From tr- maybe from, like, AAA developers, yeah. but I still think... Yeah, that's what I'm talking, that's indie, what I'm talking I about. I, okay. in, indie game, indie developers today are what are picking up the creativity slack, because indie games yeah, are I'm just all talking about, the like, the, like, the general established AAA world. Okay. Yeah. That's Everything fathom. these days is either cinematic third person action or over the wa- shoulder, yeah. Yeah, or watered down over the shoulder, whatever. Yeah. There's a lot of homogenizing in AAA games now. They all because they're all going for cinematic experiences now, which I personally hate. So because it just robs the gameplay. But a lot of people like it. And it sells well. Red, what is it now? Red Dead 2 has now sold like 800 million in three days. Dollars, mm-hmm. not copies. It, it doesn't matter what Rockstar makes. Everything they make from yeah. now on will just sell like hotcakes. Yeah. I mean, I'll give... I guess I gotta give Rockstar credit because they literally focus on cinematic games. So maybe complaining that Rockstar or Red Dead is a little too cinematic is kind of a, a backhanded slap, but... It's their know. niche in their market. Exactly. That's, that's, what expected to do. that's what they focus on. Is that the one where people apparently are 
going around <laughs> town now and punching feminists in the face and feeding them to crocodiles. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. And it, <laughs> and everyone's getting upset by it, of course. Wait, what the fuck? I, I, I haven't... Please enlighten me, Kaya. There's a, oh, there's a feminist um, in one of the main cities of Red Dead Redemption 2, and you can beat beat her up and then do whatever you want with her, basically. And so there's gifts yeah. online of people feeding her to crocodiles and such. Little cut of it on Twitter, a video. It's, it's like a suffragette or something, and she's standing in the corner shouting that women should have the right to vote and such and such and the player that approaches her punches her in the face ties her up on the horse and then feeds her to some crocodile in the swamp and apparently Jesus. people people in the the usual suspects didn't take kindly to this polygon kotaku i wonder, I wonder what rockstar expected <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully they don't give a shit I mean, yeah. they obviously put her in there for that reason. Well, the they, they didn't put her in there for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't they didn't put her in there with the intention of all right, being well, crocodile all right, food. Not, yeah, not for that reason, but already, they, they put her in there. I can already there. hear the meeting. We gotta put a feminist in there for the players to fuck up, guys. <laughs> Someone get on that. <laughs> Look, they all, uh, what I meant by that is if they put her in there and expected this to not happen, then they're fucking dumb. They obviously expected people to do this. I mean, they they do it with every character. Yeah, I, that's that's the thing. I don't understand why like everyone's getting so up in arms about them doing that. It's like you can do that to every single character in the entire game. Unless the story mission was, please feed her to the crocodiles. <laughs> it was, I don't it really wasn't a story star. <laughs> it's the first mission to ask you nicely. Please She's feed her to the crocodiles. Convincing people, they're gonna give yeah. women the right to vote. We gotta put an end to it. Take that's, her down to the, the swamp. Mission. God. <laughs> Come on, Arthur. <laughs> you can you can kill her in a more brutal that, way, Arthur. Come on. That and um, the Diablo immortal yeah. drama. Yeah. That was Ooh, quite something. I was waiting for someone to bring that up. Well, yeah. wait a what minute. A mess. We, we can't bring up Diablo Immortal because since Blizzard's doing such a terrible job about it, we need mm. to talk about a better way to get a better job. Mm, nice. Zip Recruiter. Okay. That's right, because Zip Recruiter is... A website awesome. where you can... Ho what, Jackson? I said awesome. It's awesome. Zip it Recruiter is awesome. awesome. It's a job hosting website where you can use ZipRecruiter to find the right candidates for the position that you are looking for. ZipRecruiter is the number one rated by employers in the U.S. job hosting website. It has powerful matching technology that scans thousands of resumes, identifies the people that you need with the right skills, education, and experience for your job and actively invites them to apply so you can get candidates fast. You're not just sitting around waiting for everyone to do the grunt work. It's going to help you do the work that you need to find people to do the correct work. Everybody working, everyone together to get industry flowing with Zip What's Recruiter. the URL? Well, right now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash official. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash official. ZipRecruiter.com slash official. <laughs> I have to say it three times. It is the smartest way to hire. Are you stuck in an Asian game farm where you're forced to reskin games and repurpose them into... Western franchises. <laughs> well, guess what? ZipRecruiter has a job for you. Hey. Hey. Blizzard wants to hire you. What a fucking mess they, I know. they got themselves into. What a terrible, terrible beautiful. company. This is beautiful. So from what I understand, Blizzard has a BlizzCon kind of thing, which I don't know why it exists, because Blizzard has like three IPs. Who gives a shit what they announced? Just put it on Blizz Twitter. BlizzCon is have fucking whole... huge, though, Kaya. Yeah, yeah, but, but why? It's like three games that they... They're three flagship games. How was that a big deal? Well, but, okay, wait, 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 wait. They're, okay, so, they're some of the well, most played games, on, not only in the current, but in the entire have, history of games. They have way more than three, don't they? There's yeah. like uh, Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Diablo, they own Hearthstone. everything Warcraft. They made Overwatch. They own everything Diablo. I mean, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah, that's three IPs. And I guess they Hearthstone... Also have, yeah, Hearthstone, Starcraft. Starcraft. Oh, he no, no, Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm, which is, <laughs> is I mean, Heroes of the Storm is just their Smash Brothers, and even then. Ugh. Okay, point it's is, they, the, they wait, make wait, this. Wait, what? 
What the fuck do you mean this has Smash Brothers? What does it's, that mean? It's their crossover franchise. It's, it's not a, an it's not a new IP. It's just hey, we oh. took all of our characters and put them in a game engine. I it's, gotcha. I'm not saying it's bad, but I it's mean, like Sma- like Smash Brothers isn't really a new whole IP. It uses already established characters. Mm. I mean, Hearthstone does the same thing. Would you call Hearthstone Blizzard Smash Bros Melee? Mm, we'll have to we'll have to get back to that one. <laughs> But no, no, I wouldn't. You're right. One thing that was a big at BlizzCon, though, is they had the StarCraft tournament, I believe. And oh, StarCraft. Oh. I forgot about StarCraft. Yeah. And then a non-Korean player won it for the first time in history. Holy Ooh. shit. That's yeah. It's monumental. <laughs> a super badass won it. His name's like Cyril or something. He's Finnish. And when they asked him uh, what, like, if he expected to win or something, I can't quite remember. I'm paraphrasing, but he's like... Yeah, my trophy case was missing this one, so I guess that's complete. <laughs> and then he walked away. <laughs> wow. So let's let's talk about how god awful Diablo iPhone edition is. Immortal. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that one. What I gather, they have this little panel or a, a room chuck full of men waiting with bated breath for Diablo <laughs> news after they've Diablo spent. Four. Yeah, presumably D- Diablo Four or even Diablo Three, another expansion. Either no, or. I'm setting the scene here. This is a room full of men who have come to expect a certain level of quality and a certain. <laughs> you know, they are waiting for a triple A PC game. Okay, that's your audience, and they, these they, guys, they only they leave the house out. once a year, and that's for BlizzCon. Yeah, <laughs> they buy, they save up all their allowance. For mom, for mom and her, their stepdads. Stepdad, yeah. And they come to BlizzCon and they are presented with a Diablo game. Awesome, Diablo Immortal. That sounds badass. Except it's iOS and Android only. And then apparently, oh Blizzard hired an outside firm to reskin an already existing shitty grindy <laughs> game that was. So this is basically their goal, or sorry, their attempt to we're into the Asian Mart, which a lot of game companies do now, like Riot Games. If you paid attention to Riot Games, I don't play League of Legends anymore, but I'm still subscribed to them on YouTube. And slowly but surely, you can tell how they're playing towards an Asian audience, especially with the whole K-pop shit that they just recently released. So companies are kind of testing the waters of, hey, you know what? All of these Western guys, they're kind of opinionated. They actually like good games. These Asians, on the other hand, you can just give them a grind fest and they'll just, they have no lives. They work and they die. So give them a game in between so they can work, play, and then die. And we can get rich. So that was their attempt, but they made the, you know, little mistake of announcing the game in America. No, they made the mistake of announcing the game at all. No, I mm. sincerely believe it would have gone over God. well if they only did it in Asia and then just let word of mouth spread. But but no, yeah. that's that's not true. Most of the uh, Japanese Blizzard websites and YouTubes and shit are full of people complaining as well. Everyone hates I think this game. Blizzard's in a unique position where everyone doesn't want that from them. <laughs> that too. I know. It's just the absolute bare minimum they could have done. <laughs> it really it's, was. It's less. It's less than that. It's like it's in the negative area. I don't know how they managed to just screw up public perception of them that much. Coming off like the success of Overwatch and how much uh, good praise they've had over the last few years, they just it's it's baffling. Who made the decision? I want to know that who that madman is. Who, who chose this? Par- they're apparently now doing uh, damage control and saying, well, we were thinking about announcing Diablo 4, but yeah. we we thought that this would be a better thing because it's coming out sooner and this. Uh, it's like, no. It was after we know all. Kids yeah. love those phones. A lot of people also got, they did a Q&A for some reason. They dug their own graves here. The Blizzard yeah. people, they decided to take questions from the audience after a very audible <laughs> boo. Oh, instead of yeah. winging it and saying, oh, that's all for today, boys. Let's, let's all go home. They instead passed, passed around microphones <laughs> like the oh, weeds just asking for it. Okay, it's like teasing a tiger. It's like if I went into the zoo and just bitch slapped a lion. Like, oh, hey, why don't you tell me your opinion of this lion? And then I just sucker punch him in the nutsack or something. They asked for it. <laughs> And then all of these guys, they just get up and they kind of sort of roast these people. One of them asked if this was an out-of-season April Fool's joke. Yeah. Another one, of course, asked, okay, well, do, 
are you planning anything for the PC? And the developers said, no, this is I mean, this, you know, the iOS and uh, iPhone only. No plans for PC. I and then the douchebags doubled down after everybody booed them going, what? Why, you don't have a phone? Everybody has a phone, don't you? Fuck you. And I, I really like the response. Hmm? I was just going to say, I really like the response to the guy who said, the, is this an out-of-season April Fool's joke? One of the guys genuinely seemed to take it as a good thing, like, oh, he can't believe how great this is. He thinks it's a joke. No, it is a real game that is actually coming, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. so you will have it the, soon uh, enough. About the out-of-season April Fool's joke, apparently that was a 4chan prank. The guy was uh, on 4chan for the thread for the con, and he was like, hey, I'm going up to ask a question. You know, help me. And they all they all came together to have him say that. And then, That's the best uh, they could do? Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. What? Well, well, no. I think that on the moment, it's pretty funny. But the follow-up is apparently he was banned from the convention after that. Mm. Well, the thing also is apparently God Blizzard, forbid. as an April Fool's joke in 2014, announced the Diablo phone game. So oh, they, they they made one of oh, their April man. Fool's jokes a reality. Jesus that's, Christ, that's hilarious! Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's they're asking for it. I'm telling you, it's like just it's like chest bumping a gorilla. Come on, just you know, it's upsetting because I, I of course I I didn't watch this shit. I don't play the Diablo. Games. So how come I have found out about this? Oh, Twitter was in flames. The usual suspects. The indie developers, mm. you know, whenever a company just does something shitty and the consumers get angry, what happens is that the company will ap will apologize. Their public statement is, oh, you know, we, we didn't mean it that way. But then literally everybody that works at the company, every single developer, artist, musician, whatever you have, programmer. If you go onto their personal Twitter profiles, they're all talking shit about gamers. All of them. Oh, and yeah. I, just hate I, I read it's a great this one. Is, industry standard in the video game industry to side against the consumer it's i saw so many goddamn hot takes siding against the consumer just for the sake of siding against the gamers right these 20 tweet threads of long embroidery and sophistry all all which just basically boiled down to calling gamers entitled entitled and how dare you not like this one of them blamed trump uh, what? <laughs> Since when is Trump going on raids in Diablo? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? One of them blamed it on misogyny. Unbelievable. It's retarded. The guy, Mark Kern on Twitter, seems like a nice person. He, the guy who produced World of Warcraft and Diablo 2, he himself came out and said that Blizzard fucked up and doesn't understand gamers anymore. I feel like if anybody should have an idea, it's the guy who produced these games previously. But of course he gets called a Nazi shithead for it. How do they not fucking realize that the people you're making fun of are also your customers? Because they're still going to buy the game and they've come to know that. Oh god, I, I genuinely you, you can, hope this flops. You, you can treat the gamers, the oppressed gamers, which is probably my favorite <laughs> meme, but is unfortunately like kind of a reality in a certain extent. Uh, you can treat them however you uh, want. Uh, no, like every time, like every time you don't like a game... You are immediately called a Nazi or like a toxic masculine. Very oppressed. Well, the oppressed Jackson. thing is a meme, but yeah, it's one of yeah. the very few industries where it's okay to push your customers around. The other one being like narcotics. I guess you can slap druggies around, but even they are kind of, you know, they don't want cut shit. They don't want bad drugs. So even at that point, the cartel is going to cut them some slack. Video game developers, no such luck. They're always assholes against their own the, the people that like them the people that just want to play their games and it's always this how dare you how the, dare you expect something fun from me just because you enjoyed my previous products Ugh. the problem is how do you even say what the situation with the gamers is without sounding like a fucking memeing joke they're di the disrespected gamers the misunderstood gamers like there's there's no way to describe it without sounding like you're kidding but at, at a certain level the people that are taking in these games are definitely not being understood in what they actually want 
but they, they pick up all the them. It, they pick up all the table scraps. It's like you went to a fancy restaurant and you were like, "Oh man, I hear they have a great steak. I'm gonna get a filet mignon." And they bring you like a raw slab of infected cow beef, and then they slap it on the floor and they go, "Oh, this is what we made. Dig in." And the gamers just go, "Well, I mean, you know, I am hungry. It's not what I wanted, but I, I'm I, I got to eat." So. And that's it. I love and, this restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm a fan of the restaurant. I've been here many times and I love their other meals, but you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go home. I'm not going to, I got nothing else to eat. I don't have any food at home. I've gotten bored of eating the same you shit. So. Fucking Nazi. See, and, then, and you then get on the yeah, floor and eat that. They steak. turn it around. They turn it around and go, how dare you expect a well-cooked steak? What the fuck? We made this. We made this piece of dilapidated beef for you. We brought it to you. We, even though you know you don't like it, a big portion of our our restaurant tours and fans love it. So why don't you just learn to eat it, you entitled fuck? And that's that's what it is, and it just repeats forever. It's retarded, Con. You know what those people expect. Blizzard makes good PC games, and some of them they port to other like consoles or handhelds, like Hearthstone. Or if it's Overwatch, it gets on consoles. I don't know if Warcraft has a console port, Warcraft 3, but point is, these people could have come to expect AAA shit on at least a console and at best PC, and you're coming at them with an iOS game. It's like if these people went to a car convention and you're demonstrating a tricycle for toddlers. You're saying, what? Yeah. You have legs, don't you? Just get on and... <laughs> I mean, you also got to remember it's coming from a franchise that's near exclusively PC and has a very established what kind of games they are. And a very passionate it's, audience. Yeah, it's 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 like if you came out and said, we finally, after billions of years, made Chess 2, everybody. The sequel to Chess. And it's like a fit the square peg in the square hole game with different colors and that's yet? it. Charlie. I just, I, I still really like the why you guys have phones thing. It's the most non-argument <laughs> yeah, shit yeah. ever. It's like... It's such I read a, a great quote. It's douchebag thing to say. Yeah, it's so arrogant. It I really is. It. Yeah. The qu a quote that really summed that up nicely, though, is we all have assholes as well, but that doesn't mean we all want anal. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> very true. Yeah. It's such a non goddamn argument. Oh, so fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> but such I, a I fucking guess, robot. That, but, but look, e the, even though that argument sucks real hard, I can make a better argument for something. Would you guys like to hear it? Mm -hmm. so, all right, so here's my argument. I believe that Lisa is one of the most comfortable mattresses I have ever slept on in my life. Do you guys agree or disagree? Agreed. 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 Well, that's because Lisa is an online mattress retailer that sells you a mattress with over 12,000 five-star reviews and more than 300,000 happy Sleepers. The much loved Lisa mattress is even better now with improved pressure relief for all sleepers, enhanced cooling on the top layer, new responsiveness with as the industry standards adapt for an even better night's sleep. Dead arm sensations are now gone for you side sleepers out there. This mattress is high tech now. I'm I'm impressed. And it also contours to every curve of your body so you can feel like you're floating on air. So if you want to have a mattress that'll make you wake up and go, oh, you know, I was having a bad day because uh, Diablo is just sinking down the toilet, but, you know, I don't feel bad about it because I had an amazing night's sleep. You can order your Lisa mattress at Jackson. Tell them the URL. Lisa.com slash official with promo code official. You can try it risk-free for 100 nights. It ships direct to your door in a convenient box with free shipping and free returns. That's Lisa, L-E-E-S-A dot com slash official. You can get up to $150 off the regular mattress or $225 off the luxury mattress with free shipping. L-E-E-S-A dot com slash official. I'm so upset that so many franchises are just going down the fucking shitter. Like the, the Diablo and then the new Pokemon Let's Go being made for literal four-year-olds and... God, I, I hate that as That's a girl older, there's more of a... I didn't know there was an like, adult <laughs> okay. audience for Pokemon. Well, Pokemon's an all-ages franchise. Oh, 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 come on, and <laughs> Okay, now you're just saying like, oh, I hate look, how they made the new Dora the Explorer game for kids. Okay, look, <laughs> look My look, little look. pony got way too childish do for you, my taste. Do you guys not know about this then? Do you guys not know about this? Well, the underground no, 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 mechanics. So the new Pokemon Let's Go games make it impossible for you to fail. So you remember, you remember how back in the old days of Pokemon, you'd get to, 
No, 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 no. Listen, you know how back in the old <laughs> days of the original Pokemon, you'd get to Brock's gym and you, I don't know, you pick Charmander because you have good taste. Yes, yes, we you, read the strategy guide. <laughs> yeah, the story. And you'd walk up and he'd be all like, hi, I'm Brock. I'm here to fuck your ass because you pick Charmander and he's got all rock types and you can't do dick until your Charmander's super high leveled or you catch some other Pokemon. And you figure out how to beat him because, you know, the rock types get fucked by Brock and Brock just fucks you real good. In the new Pokemon Let's Go, the ones coming out for the Switch soon, which are remakes of the originals, when you get to the gym, there's a nice little man in the front, and he goes, Hi, this is Brock's gym. Uh-oh, your team doesn't look like it'll be very good against Brock. Why don't you go catch some Pokemon that are effective against Brock first? Then I'll let you fight him. L- literally, the game mm. does not let you progress until you just get the easy mode. That's well, true. I imagine that may be part of the tutorial. No, it's part of the game. Well, the tutorial is also part of the game. Have you confirmed, like, the last boss, the final four, it says your party is too underleveled to take them on, please go back? No, but... Or is it were, just with Brock? But it's supposed to be a remake of the original game. Why would they add these obligatory tutorials? It's easier, but can you still fail in a fight? I mean, like if you ta- if you I take your, so. your Yeah, so... I don't, I don't know. Or else it's not I a game. Don't, I, don't, it's a, I feel like they're just adding unnecessary overhead. And even then, the animations look fucking atrocious. It's a fully 3D model Pokemon game where half oh the attacks God, are the model just so jumps. fucking entitled, Andrew. <laughs> I know, I'm, a, I'm an entitled, misunderstood gamer. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, for, God forbid that I, I, I want to co- comment on a series. Because, no, I, I have a phone. I have a Switch. I have a Nintendo Switch. I just should buy this game, launch, not say anything. What other series guys- have been fucked up lately? What other series have been yeah, fucked up? like running to the ground or shitty ideas. Wasn't the new Assassin's Creed really bad? No, it was really good. Oh. <laughs> Says uh, the average, guy who played average, 180 average. hours of it. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. I like think it was that. better than the old Assassin's Creed games. I, I'm going to agree with that as well. Oh. I mm. can't really think of any series that are progressively just getting worse and worse besides Command and Conquer oh, and Diablo. Well, that's a yeah. good one. That's a fucking yeah. good Command one. Command and Conquer is a good example, too. Everything mm-hmm. Blizzard is just dying. Well, I mean, Wait, Command, Command and Conquer is Blizzard? No, I, that's EA. Not, oh, you're right. Yeah, it's yeah. EA. You're right. I, I misunderstood. Yeah. Bleh. What's the other EA that just came out not too long ago? Oh, Star Wars is another. You know, I got the best dying franchise for you. Star Wars in every realm of media. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The movies are bombing. The shows are getting fucking who knows. I don't, I don't know about bombing. They're still making quite just, a bit of money. They're just really bad. Yeah, they're terrible movies. Your statement should have been the movies are getting so incredibly bad that it insults the general human intelligence. No, you said Solo <laughs> was pretty good. Yeah, that's not a Star Wars movie, though. Yeah, I would never every- consider that a Star Wars movie. <laughs> Jackson, you gotta, movie. Jackson, you gotta remember the general audience the is fuck? always fucking backwards. Solo bombed to all hell, and yet it was a yeah. respected Stop movie. Stop bombed. It still made so much money. It made no, way no, 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 no. He, he's right, though. It, it Compared to, like, every other Star Wars figure, that shot well below everything yeah. Disney expected <laughs> from it. And then The Last Jedi, which was a fucking turd fire, made gangbusters, even though people admitted that they hated it. So I assume that there's not gonna be a Solo 2 or a duo or whatever they would call the sequel. <laughs> no. I don't think did you, so. Did you see the uh, standalone movies anyway? Who's, those, those who's the woman who's running a bunch of Star Wars creative now? You know her name? Did you did you see that she put out a statement saying that fans will be sorry for not Kathleen, respecting Kathleen yeah. Kennedy? Oh, Kathleen yeah, Kennedy. She, yeah, yeah. She put out a statement saying yeah. you guys will be sorry for not respecting the Last Jedi and Solo. Yeah, she was like threatening, like holding it hostage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, what, what does if that you, mean? If you thought I fucked up your series before, wait till you see what I do now. <laughs> I'm throwing Gundams in this time. <laughs> Turns out there was a sub series where Solo and Jar Jar Binks were friends before the, the other movies. Here it comes. I guess and, movies is and then they time traveled. Good industry example for when the when it sucks, it's the viewer's fault. If you're bad at making a movie, it's somehow the, everything. Me, the guy who bought yeah, any the ticket, creative medium. Every, every, it's every on creative me. medium these days is like, oh, it's not bad. It's just you, the fans, who are bad for not liking it. There's no responsibility comedy anymore in too, creative actually. outputs. Right? Oh, everything. you didn't laugh? Well, Any, this is post-comedy. Everything. You're just a Philistine. You don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> any, any any creative <laughs> medium, like Andrew yeah. said, is, yeah. has that problem. Yeah, it keeps geez, I'm starting to notice a pattern here. 
in art Where too. Whole- oh, you don't like that? Well, it's modern art, actually. No, it's not <laughs> oh just my an God. ass oh, meter. Jesus Christ. I get that in the moist meter more times than I can count. You just didn't understand the game or the movie to not give it a Pe- hundred. Yeah, people are so over your head. fucking dumb. People become yeah. literal monkeys banging fucking rocks over their heads when they have to realize that other people can have opinions that differentiate from you liking it. It's the fucking worst. It's like, just because someone doesn't like a movie doesn't mean that they didn't get it. It doesn't mean that you're, it's not hey, well, objectively good. To be fair, good. you guys say that about me liking Star Wars. Shut up, Jackson. But yeah. anyway, you don't <laughs> like... <laughs> Do you even like Star Wars anymore? I, I like the previous... <laughs> uh, this is loyalty speaking. <laughs> you, you like the world of Star Wars. You don't like what they're doing with it now. Not really, no. And I, under, I understand that and respect that. It, but it's... You know, just because you don't like something, it doesn't mean that... You don't, people always make this assumption you have to connect with things to properly judge them. Like, oh, you just, you didn't get it or you didn't get engrossed in it or, you know, it's not made to appeal to you. It's like, no, you can be objective. You can have opinions on shit. No. It doesn't matter. You're ignorant. (sighs) No. Look, just because I didn't buy every fucking Blu ray of Solo and just because I don't have a big life size Chewbacca standing in my corner. (laughs) Doesn't mean that I can't judge the Star Wars every movies. Copy so they fund the second one. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, right. I own a life-size Watto, so I am perpetually allowed to criticize oh, Star yeah, Wars well, as hard as possible. That. That's also true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's like John for Wick. Yeah, she's gonna send the assassins to me. <laughs> one more word out of your mouth, and we get Watto: The New Adventures. <laughs> Just to watch. <laughs> Don't push it too far. She'll set it in the Red Dead 2 universe next, the new Star Wars. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. Like a Western Star Wars movie. I'd be down. It's like that. Star Wars. Uh, Isn't. Well, Star Wars is. Yeah, Star Wars is supposed to be Western inspired. Yeah. But at if, least if the you old, go full on, full on in that, you mean like well, that at revolvers least the old ones. against Vader? <laughs> what do you want? Well, they, they, they do. They He's do have space lasso. Yeah, they do. But like, like a, a revenge story on we'll like a desert chase planet against well. Vader. There's, there's been enough desert planets. Yeah, we're gonna catch Star us a movies, Sith Lord. The old, the old Star Wars movies had a ton of inspiration from old school westerns. A shitload. of I didn't of mean it. inspiration. Jesus, I meant they like take it back in time to the western <laughs> Star years, Wars. like cowboys <laughs> and aliens. Oh, uh, like yeah. 1895, where Luke has to, has to run the trail to find a nice he patch of polio. land. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was imagining, like, Carmen San Diego, where they go, like, the Civil War next week, oh, you right, know, yeah. shit like that. Anakin Skywalker in a saloon. Drinking <laughs> yeah. some good old ale. <laughs> you boys uh, ever get called <laughs> autistic by your siblings? To switch it up a little. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about what? this. I usually don't share wrong? things from my yeah. private life, but since my sister doesn't speak English and this is vague enough, it's fine. I have a nephew, and so I met, I was going to grab lunch <laughs> with my brother-in-law, who's a really cool guy, really super nice guy, and he told me my sister was going to join, which I didn't like. But okay, we meet up at this Asian place, <laughs> and I hate Asian, I, so I just had duck, duck, whatever, something. And we sit down and they have this, <laughs> I'm just trying to eat my meal and I'm trying to converse with him, trying to ignore her. And they start into this routine of a heartfelt, we're coming clean with you kind of a conversation where I'm getting uncomfortable. And they tell me that <laughs> their three or four year old kid just got diagnosed with autism and whatever that other thing is that always goes hand in hand with autism. I think it's Asperger's. So he just got diagnosed with that and they're looking at me like, you know, we we wanted to tell you, we wanted you to know as if I give a shit. So I go, okay, that's not really a big deal. He asks me, well, you know, we kind of, we were able to tell before, yada, yada, they kind of have a difficult time with him. He asks me if I was able to tell before he got diagnosed. And I say no, because, you know. I don't know any other kids. I have no frame of reference. I just thought he was a little spoiled <laughs> shithead. I don't know. I, I don't know any other kids. I no, I just I thought this is what kids are. Uh, just <laughs> rude, annoying, loud. So I, you didn't meet any of his friends beforehand. You don't. 
you know, <laughs> run with his He's gang. a normal kid. He's just a loud, <laughs> annoying kid, right? He's a boy. He has energy. He doesn't listen. He just runs around and screams. What the fuck do you want? But yeah, you know, so she's, she's already like lowering her expectations, <laughs> but she's kind of sort of, you they're good people, but, and so you can tell they're a little scared of being judged for this. So he's, she's like going, I told her, okay, well, you know, it's not a big deal. Just don't tell mom. She goes, this isn't something to be ashamed of, Kaya. And I tell her, that's not what I said. I know it's not something to be ashamed of, but you know, our mom, she's going to give you all kinds of unsolicited advice. You're never going to hear the end of it. Just don't tell her. She's not going to know this the difference. Come on. And then I, you know, I just told them to get him a patent, not lower their expectations all too much. But at the end of it, she goes into this description of how when I was little, I was just like him. And apparently I remind uh, her of him and that my uncles would say the same things about me. So I guess even though I'm not diagnosed, a lot of people think that in my childhood, I, I displayed a lot of autism. That, now everything makes yeah, sense I mean, now. See, that's one of the things that I would... That, that's why you can't that's understand one of the Star I Wars. Contest. <laughs> like, of all the things that could come up in a conversation, if you call me an autistic Aspie, I go, yeah, probably. Uh, that, I mean, that would explain a lot. Could be. You're a high functioning autistic, though. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, high functioning? He functions <laughs> off alcohol now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> the, his single moments of clarity are to get himself another drink. <laughs> Yeah, when the alcohol wears off, it's like he's a, a werewolf coming <laughs> off. And then he, his Asperger's takes over. <laughs> Kai is either drunk or autistic at all times. Uh, uh, that would be awesome. It's like, I can drink. What a, what a hard and life. And be Rain Man. <laughs> oh, that's great. Fuck. That was fun that's to hear. fantastic. Do you hmm? think you're autistic, though? Like, deep, deep down, down, do you think you're autistic? <laughs> no. Yeah, well, deep down, you autistic soul. How can we trust yeah. him? He's autistic. How would I know? I'm, yeah. I'm an Aspie. Hmm. Um, <laughs> well, why don't you go get it checked out? How the hell would you check it out? That could be something fun for an episode. We all do an I autism idea, test. Actually. We should all do an I'd autism like test, sperm count, testosterone test, just like those losers at BuzzFeed, except... Get all yeah, of our stats... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then we can have like a like you know Madden NFL pre stack <laughs> card. So if you select us as a team, you get all of our like sperm count data like and everything. That. Wait, what do you mean? Like, what? I don't want like an overall score. I don't like that. But yeah, that's a story. I mean, I told him. I like that idea. You can't lower your expectations just because some trigger happy psychiatrist douchebag told you your kid had was retarded. They tell that everyone. Everybody has ADHD these days, don't they? Come on. And even if you really did have autism Asperger's or whatever the hell fancy shits you want to throw at him to have a unique child and be special uh, so what look at it look at like half the rich people on this planet look at fucking Elon Musk who can't get through an interview without looking retarded but he's smart despite all the criticisms some of us have and he's rich what do you want why lower your expectations let's get him a goddamn dog you'll be he'll be fine it was Thank quite you. motivational. Now, let's talk yeah, about how YouTube steals I, uh, money from cancerous children. Have you guys heard about this? Well, wait, 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 look, we can't talk about having money stolen unless we talk about having money saved. All right. Okay? <laughs> so if you're going to save money, one of the best ways that you can do it is honey. Charlie, can you please ask me what is honey? What is Honey, Andrew? Honey is a free browser extension available on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, you know, literally the three browsers that matter, that effortlessly saves you time and money when you shop online at over 30,000 stores. Jackson, you literally told us a couple days ago you bought something with Honey. What was it? Oh, I did. Uh, um, <laughs> uh... What did I buy? I bought a shelving unit and I saved seventeen dollars using Honey. There and, you go. And uh, it's really good with Amazon, actually. Uh, pretty much everything on Amazon can be discounted using Honey, so I recommend that. Boys, I've been I've been venturing out in the wild lately. I've been 
scoping out people and friends. And I noticed that some of our products that we advertise on the show get uh, pushed around a bit. But I have to this day met two different friends of mine who use honey in the real world before even knowing that I that they were a sponsor of ours. And I looked over and I went, you know, that's a fantastic free program you got there. And they went, yeah, saves me money on a whole bunch of online retailers for doing absolutely nothing. I, I, oh God, you can get this free program, which is free. I, I still don't know why literally every listener doesn't use it at joinhoney.com slash official. That's two words. Join honey dot com slash official honey is the easiest way to save money while shopping online if i could i I real quick want to read this part of their mission statement each of us holds a multitude of possibilities together that multitude is near infinite so if you want a multitude of possibilities of savings go to join honey.com slash official awesome all right so now let's talk about children dying of cancer because youtube yeah have you guys heard of this I, I, I saw read about it because you tweeted it. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, you tweet. Yeah, again, it. it's one of those things I don't partake in, but then I hear about it and I get triggered into using Twitter. I just, I, I <laughs> vein pops and something just, I fucking rage. So apparently my autism, autism takes, takes over. over, the blood alcohol level drops, it plummets, and I just go, no, <laughs> this injustice will not stand. Serves you up. I turn into that angel from the Diablo 3 <laughs> cutscene where he goes like, if this is how it's going to be, then I'm not well, your brother, and I rip off my angel wings, and I go down into the realm of the mortals <laughs> to get down and dirty and rant on Twitter and be a badass. <laughs> so no, yeah, I'm what a hero. A hero, thank God. What a big lead. Oh, yeah. So uh, you guys know that since the yeah. super chat thing started, YouTube is supposed to, if they don't like what you say in a super chat, they can take the money away and give it to a charity. So apparently, there's this late night. YouTube show stream, which is apparently gigantic, like the biggest one called the kill stream. And they have all sorts of guests run by a guy called Ethan Ralph, but apparently all of his guests are, you know, kind of problematic. So the past week, wait, 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 Ethan, Ethan, Ethan Ralph, you said, yeah, is that Ralph retort? Yeah. Ralph retort. Yeah. Okay. So he has this kill stream show thing where he always says it's like Maury Povich or something, I think. Uh, but, you know, all of his guests are Nazis, in quotes. So in the past week, Dick Masterson was on. That's the only person I know on that show. And they decided to, not this week, but a month or so ago, they decided to raise funds for a kid's cancer charity, St. Jude's. And they raised almost $27,000 in a single stream. Guess what YouTube does? Guess what? They found they the it. cure for cancer instead and cut out the middleman. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, no, they confiscated all the donations. They decided, Sweet. no. Did what they, heroes? Did they at least give YouTube bread to all those sick kids? No, they didn't do anything. Actually, they literally <laughs> refunded. So the whole story is that some cunt at the Wall Street Journal, because who else, decided, you know what, last time we fucked with PewDiePie, we need a new target. How about this Ethan Ralph fella who seems to be on the up and coming? So some... I forget her name. It's like Corey Yo, Yori Ko, or something like that. She writes, she gears up to write this hit piece about how YouTube is enabling hate speech in the super chats. YouTube, upon hearing this, before the article even comes out, cancels all donations and refunds the money back to these Nazis. Nazi again in quotes. So the cancer kids, the kids with cancer at St. Jude's, they don't get anything. They don't get a single penny. They get nothing. They get all, it all taken away just before Christmas time. You know, you don't even know if half of them are going to make it till Christmas, but maybe they could have gotten some extra Legos or something. And no, it's Nazi money. You can't take that. So they cancel it. And I got upset at this because I don't know, something just rubbed me wrong about money being given back to Nazis instead of children who have cancer doesn't seem right hmm. if you you know okay let's take the stance where youtube wanted to virtue signal like we're not going to let this money go through so we're sending this back and we're going to donate our clean pristine money the same amount i would have respected that at least a little they bit they didn't yeah hmm. 
I mean, I that's know. a fucked up part. We can't afford okay, to. If you're, lo- if you're logic... In your head, if you're going to call these people bad people and they're all Nazis, why are you giving them their money back? They tricked themselves. They fucked up. They decided to give kids money, their own money. Take it. Who cares? But they care because in their heads... I read a bunch of threads. So if you want to tap into the lifeline of what the progressive tech people are thinking in Silicon Valley, just go into Reddit and go on like shit Reddit says in Circle Broke too, and you will immediately see what their reasoning is. And the reasoning is, if this charity took that blood money from those Nazis, it legitimizes their hate. Because apparently on the stream, they debated whether or not the Holocaust happens. Apparently some guy went on, they also had on Richard Spencer, which is one of the more boring what? losers. How does how does giving cancer kids money legitimize hate? So because how? these are Nazis and they're debating whether or not the Holocaust happened, see? And they are donating to charity to make themselves look better. I saw somebody on Twitter use the phrase, they are laundering their hate by donating <laughs> Ooh, that's p- to kids powerful. who have bone cancer. And that's the problem. Well, are those so, Twitter warriors donating money to cancer oh God, kids? No. Because at the moment the Nazis look better. No, of course not. No. But point is, they'd rather have children just not get any extra help. All of the people, so many goddamn people replied to my tweets going, well, you know what? If I had the choice between dying and taking some Nazis money, I'd rather die. Well, buddy, <laughs> that's nice for you. What a martyr. Uh, what a what a great guy you are making that sacrifice instead of the children we're actually talking about here. How about we ask them? How about we ask little Billy? Yeah. Why were they given the choice? <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you actually asked one of the parents, th- that's not the woof woof. The what's that? The the racist racism, racism watch dog. dog. Yeah. He barked at me. Oh he God. went. The racism dog owner quote retweeted me going. I said something like, "Imagine if the imagine if the people in charge of." treating your child who has cancer decided to refuse help imagine how you'd feel as a parent and he he again he gave me the well they're just laundering hate the kids the kids are better off dying you know unbelievable it made me so goddamn angry and then it turns out that the woman who wrote this article on the wall street journal she did it because previously on that youtube show they talked about her parents who also fucked kids out of cancer money. So it was a personal vendetta that she had. It seems to run in the family to take cancer money from kids. But what really pissed me off was that St. Jude's, the charity itself, said, oh, we wouldn't have taken that money anyway. Really? I saw really? that. You yeah, were in a I position to turn down money? Are you nuts? What kind of a charity? Unreal. There are certain groups that I hate, as you might know, you know, Animal what? abusers, no. pedophiles. If they were stupid enough to give me their money, I would still take it because I can still use it for something. Mm-hmm. Right? This is ridiculous. You're telling... Yeah, once once they give you the money, it becomes your money. It becomes your money. Okay. <laughs> who fucking cares who it came Are you going from? To scream? It's blood money, Jackson. Yeah, blood. I don't care. Somebody made a good point saying, hey, you know what? How, why don't you burn all of your cash because you can't be sure who owned it last? Exactly. How do you know? How do you know uh, that two dollar donation you got the other day didn't come from a clan member? Hmm? You can't. Oh, Jesus. What are you gonna do? Screen every donation for purity to make sure they aren't sinners? I I could understand if it if like the money was donated with the intention of turning the kids into Nazis, but I really don't <laughs> think that was the case. Like they're being blackmailed into if you survive this, it's because of us, and you need to become a Nazi for us after. This is that's this, not the case. This is retardedly obviously assuming that they are Nazis, which even if they were, they I assume they knew that some of the money would go towards Jewish children. Right? I'm sure St. Jude's has some Jewish kids in their wards. What, was the money earmarked as like, don't give any to the Jews? No. Why don't you use it? Why don't you use it for good? Why don't you take Nazi money and make good on it? And then I asked this douchebag cunt, the racism doc po- fucker. I asked, okay, if you don't want to take money from bad people, where do you draw the line? If the cartel came to you and decided to donate a billion dollars, would you take it? And he said, no, of course not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I believe that, sure. 
You're not going to take a billion dollars, which could possibly go towards research and curing cancer. How noble of you. So he's basically not the state of the nation of Mexico then. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't have challenged him a bit more, you know, personally. Like if your dog was about to die, but they were going to fund the cure, the treatment, would you take it? No, Charlie, they're going to say no. It doesn't matter. The... First of all, none of these people have children. They don't know how it's like to even relate to a mindset of oh, I said, a parent. I said dog. So you can't ask anything like, "Well, what? What if? What if something or someone you loved was about to die?" They're, go- they're always going to say no. I wouldn't take it because the only thing they do care about is their own lives, which is not on the line. So they can bluff as much as they want. I can say the same thing. I would never take a trillion dollars from somebody who once stole an ice cream. No. It's immoral. Yeah, I'd take it. Yeah, I'd, I'd give the person a blowjob if I had to. You kidding? Do you ever do you ever think the parents, just like as their son is wasting away of cancer, just literally blood filling his lungs and he's in horrendous pain, they just, they walk over to him and they shake his hand and they go, thank you for not taking that blood money. Yeah. As you can see, me and me and Timmy here who, oh God, his skin's falling off again. <laughs> but me and Timmy here, we, we are just so proud of you. Isn't that right, Timmy? Oh, he's, he's trying to give a thumbs up, but he, he's too weak. But we, we really, really thank you for having this moral high ground. He, he really thumbs. wants to thank you, racism dog owners. Yeah, or whatever they are. racism dog for saying you'd kill me rather than accept blood money. It's so, so nice of you. <laughs> God, I would, I, I would hope, resurrect I, I myself hope, from the see, dead and choke these people in a, like, the grudge, the horror movie. I would come back to haunt these assholes if they somehow no, you gotta, got me killed because they didn't want to accept money from people they didn't like unreal you gotta you gotta no you gotta give them an actual piece of like dread i'm a i'm a big fan of pettiness and doing things out of spite i hope i sincerely hope that in the coming years every single child that dies because they lost that money their name, their info, how old they were when they died, how much pain they were in is sent to the people who refused that money it just shows up in a little letter on their doorstep as a reminder of, hey, this is your fault. I truly believe that those kind of people that make those decisions, like these moral high ground people, have absolutely no possible compassion None. inside them at all, so I don't think they'd care. None. They aren't able to. They never learned it. They, how would they? They aren't. These are the kind of people who think that babies are a sexual disease, and I better live until I'm 60 with two cats and wine, right? How the fuck would they... God, I'm getting upset again. One of the more retarded things was people going, well, you know, it's why are you acting like $27,000 is a big deal? (laughs) St. Jude's gets millions in donations. That's a drop in the bucket. It's worth it telling Nazis to fuck off. Uh, What a great argument. argument. Why are Uh, are you so... To the guy that made that one, can you check out our Patreon at any point? (laughs) Really? (laughs) No, the argument uh, is, well, they make a lot of other money. None of the kids are going to suffer. But your point is that they shouldn't get all the help that, that they can because they already have enough help, according to you. Why? Every little bit helps. And all of that other money that you're talking about, all of the other millions that St. Jude makes from other people, do you think all of them are nice people? No, they're all flawed people. It comes in small donations that add up. It's like five bucks here, ten bucks there. You think everybody who donates five dollars has never done anything bad in their lives, but you're still taking their money. They've never been on the Ralph report. That means <laughs> they've they're never pure been heart. on the Ralph retort, yeah. So he's been he's been kicked off of YouTube yet. Every single channel of his deleted. Oh god. Because Are you of this. Serious? Jesus Christ. Oh, they bleached them off the internet. They did the shit they do now, this this exile. Where everybody drops. Okay, you. Wh- what was the what was the issue? What like he, he had Nazis check. on his platform. He opened his mouth. He, so he super ran chat. stream. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm people, so people fucking glad just, I don't stream on YouTube yeah, anymore. People can just go on your stream and like type racist stuff, and then you get banned. Yes, it's yep. the internet. Yeah. Yeah. It's the internet. Somebody used a mean word about Jews on a super chat. Yeah. Have you seen the internet in the last five? I hate this mentality where they're apparently trying to just abolish. What the internet is, where people can do and say whatever the hell they want. Have you been on 4chan? This has been a thing since the internet started. People say mean shit. I don't understand. I don't understand why they're banning the channel owner when it's the super chat users that are the issue. Well, because the channel owner is the one who had on 
I don't know, some bedwetting Nazi in his mother's basement to talk about whether or not the Holocaust happened. I will I will say I think that's pretty fucking dumb to have to have he that on especially on it. YouTube. Cares. It's a retard. It's like it's no different yeah. than I incels mean, having a channel. I've had incels good, on Dr. Love argument. because it's funny. It's <gasps> funny to a human. Jackson them. erase that. Jackson erase that. We can't be in their crosshairs. <laughs> yeah. We have never Change conversed it. with an incel. Change, dub over Kai's voice and make him say I've had progressives on my channel before. I've only had a my favorite St. Jude money deniers on our show. I've only ever had people that are approved of under YouTube's politics. Because Game you, developers. You have to remember, YouTube has a politics policy. It's in the fine print of the user agreement when you sign up for an account, and it says you will only ever agree with our stances politically, and you will only ever talk about and do things that fall within our agenda. It, it's clear as day right there. You can't really blame them, you know? It just, I mean, they they all the time, it just rubbed me extra wrong this time because of the whole you're gonna piss on people's donations come on come on really this is how far you're willing to go we've seen so much fucked up shit i get it but like denying going like no pulling the plug on this charitable donation really that was just an extra level of wow I was going to say there's plenty of right-leaning uh, like political commentators on YouTube that don't get banned immediately or at all. Like there's don't, the name don't, don't name drop. Don't name drop them. I'm not name dropping anyone, but I'm just saying that YouTube as a platform still facilitates both ideologies. But so they're just they're just banning hate speech. Is that what I, what I'm? They ban that's what I'm getting. They can anyway. get, but this happens because the Wall Street Journal wrote a hit piece. Or rather, was gearing right. up to write a hit piece. So immediately, okay, this, I forgot about that. The single person oh, whose name is apparently Yuri Ko, immediately. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a PewDiePie shit, right? The Wall Street Journal, for some reason, has this reach where if they talk shit about a YouTuber, it hurts YouTube. And YouTube, I assume, learned their lesson. They did not want a second adpocalypse, like when it happened to PewDiePie. And everybody pulled out and they had to fix that taking several months. So I guess they just oh, they've done a great job there. decided, okay, scorched earth, nuke everybody on YouTube who was even mentioned in this Wall Street Journal article, which is creepy. Fuck YouTube. I hate them. Yeah, Thank you for YouTube. listening to this podcast on YouTube. <laughs> yeah but they're they're Go just, to uh, audio God. platform be a patriot oh did i uh did i update you guys on my on my channel monetization issue is let it, me guess it's been fixed it, no there's a small little update he was like hey man so so obviously you know i've been for months now every response i get is we don't have an update yet but i'll <laughs> let you know what it happens i finally got a time frame and uh he messaged me and he went hey man you know i don't have any updates yet and this and that but it looks like by this point we'll be able to get this finished within the next few weeks. So, like, I I, just, I don't know what the fuck they're doing anymore <laughs> it's... on on any conceivable level. It seems like they just they have a fucking ship that is starting to sink, and it looks like all of them are completely fine with stepping off on a little island and watching it go down with everyone else aboard and not even tell not even telling them that it's fucking going down. <laughs> Andrew's Hugby's channel is the only thing keeping YouTube together. <laughs> Don't you see? In general, you're I mean, in general, thing. with everything, I, I, I still issue this challenge, and no one literally even comes close to answering it. What is a good thing YouTube has done in the last three years? They, uh, I, I heard one time that they promoted a creator who was a sub-2 million channel on their Ooh. Twitter. What? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow, they tweeted out dude. a video. Sub two million, so like the the lower end of an unknown channel. Mm-hmm. Wow, dude! Holy they make shit! Some pretty impressive decisions, if you ask me. Yeah, <laughs> this is the shout out part of the show where we shout out the shout outs from Patreon shout outs. So this one comes from Roger, who says, "Hey guys, been listening to your voices since day one, supporting since I downloaded Patreon a week later. I love this podcast and wish you nothing but success. Also, Space Jesus is real." Thanks, Roger. That's super sweet. And agreed. Space Jesus is real. Okay. This comes from Luther Christian Aponte. Aponte. I can't Aponte? believe in all... 
I guess I'm still not sure. I think it's a pawn. Can't believe in all my shout outs. I've forgotten to thank you for making videos on the keto diet, which is how I first learned about it. It almost sounded too good to be true, but through it, I've lost my heavy. I've gone from my heaviest of 370 to finally under 300 in seven months. Jesus. That's impressive. And it has also significantly helped my depression. Hopefully on nice. my way to losing even more. Thank you for potentially saving my life. Keep wow, fucking man. going, Luther. Congrats, yeah, good Luther. Shit, Luther. Well. Keep it up. Fuck yeah. Charlie, you also this one's yeah. yeah, this one is from Vito Chaw's tutor of Peef Spogdar. <laughs> we interrupt your regularly scheduled nonsense for this message. Congrats on 100 episodes, boys. I'm happy I was able to make it out to see you guys live. And hopefully you'll do it again. It's been a blast listening to you boys, and I look forward to the next 100 episodes. Yay. Thank you, Peef. Thanks, Peef. Yeah, thanks, man. Who wants this one? Andrew. Okay. Uh, this is from James Herrera. It's been a while since I've sent in a shout out, so I would like to take this opportunity to hit you guys and everyone listening with The Floor is Lava. It can be read by anyone. So I did it. So The Floor is Lava. Thanks, James. Thanks, James, for making it harder for me to go to the bathroom. This is by Shaka Lance. Hello, homo sapiens. Today, I thought I would share a quick masturbation story of my own. When I was in my hormonal years, around 14 to 16, I had a phase where I would masturbate anywhere ever, anywhere I could as a challenge. First, it started with all the rooms in the house. Then it moved to every bathroom in any restaurant or friend's house I would visit. I even started doing it in the stall at the school bathroom. Fortunately, I moved on from that phase before anything bad happened. Anyway, thanks for the great content. Congrats on 100 and cheers. That's thanks, a pretty Chocolate cool Lance. way to spend your time, I guess. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. you know, like it. If you have some downtime, just get it out. Yeah. Mm. Kaya. Oh, sorry. Uh, he says, hi, boys. It's me again. He wants me to read this. Ever since that first misplaced pubes sprouted from my face, this is as he wrote it, I've shaved the manly way that my father showed me and his father showed him. Going out in a stormy night with nothing but my hatchet dulled from cutting firewood, I chop away at my coarse beard like a true man. It's always been like that until one day I heard the boys running an ad for Dollar Shave Club. As a man, I felt it was my duty to show my support, so I broke manly tradition and got the starter kit for only $5. Once it arrived, I, for the first time, experienced the weighty executive razor in my hand and the smooth Dr. Carver's shaving butter on my face. It was so easy. The razor danced across my face and turned me from the rough, grisly man I had become to a smooth-faced baby like I had once been long ago. My manly father has rejected my new smooth-faced ways, but he'll come around. I've never felt so young, like a new man. DollarShaveClub.com slash official. Reclaim your youth. That was beautiful. Poetic. Elaborate. This one comes from Deviant Predator. Oh, hey, official butts. I'm actually going to shout out my friend for a change. We're making some DJ music. Don't know if I'm allowed to post links, but here it is. <laughs> read it. <laughs> All right. Now read the link. <laughs> yeah, read it. It is YouTube slash C capital I V lowercase I capital T lowercase N capital U O Y R U. It might be an L. We also make metal music. The first All of I. the ones at the end are capital. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to follow along with what I'm saying, I, I think you're probably doing links wrong, so it's either yeah. an I or an L. We also make metal music, and Charlie and Kai, I will donate my time to do music for Hard Turbo. Oh. Mm. Wouldn't mind making an OP metal song. As always, much love, guys. Thanks, nice. Deviant. Thank you. I'll read the next one. This one is from Timothy DeBone. Just wanted to say that my longtime girlfriend and best friend broke up with me in the beginning of September, <laughs> and you guys have helped me so much with the hurt. I get it. I get in my own head and was just having something, Jesus, and just having something to put on and listen to was exactly what I needed. You guys made me laugh and smile when I wouldn't otherwise. Love you guys and keep up the good shit. I'm I'm oh. sorry to hear that, man. You'll get over it. You'll I've, find someone much better. Yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah. Wait two weeks, you'll be fine. You can do it. You'll find a woman who appreciates the official podcast. <laughs> this is also for <laughs> That's you, Jackson. The requirement. Yeah, this one comes from Phantom in Time. Hey, boys, I haven't done one of these in ages. The last time I did, I shouted out a couple of friends this time. I'd like to shout out my, my mom. <laughs> Aww. 
This time I'd like to shout out my mum for being being my constant best friend over one of the mm. toughest patches in my life. Unicorns and hugs, your son. That's so Aww, sweet. That's so adorable. Oh. That was very wholesome. Mm. Shout out to your mum, Phantom. Does she have a what phone? A sweetie. Huh? I asked if she had a phone. Because then they could keep in touch. And also play I don't know, Diablo games. I was going to I thought I could go somewhere with that and then I fucked it up. This one's from Peter Joseph. <laughs> It's a shame we can't edit that out since it's live in front of yeah, the Discord now. Now we're going to pure raw material on me. What was that? I don't know. I but can't tell you. Diablo even fit into that? Sometimes I just talk and then my mind catches up. <laughs> this one's from Peter Josephs. Hey, boys. Hope the month has treated you well. And Andrew, I hope you had fun at Yumacon. I did. Here's something for you. You guys t have talked a lot about the whole don't meet your heroes ideology, and I'm curious where you currently stand on it. I've had the good fortune of being able to meet a good portion of my musical heroes in a small setting so I can interact with them and pick their brain. It has unanimously yielded humbling, inspiring, and extremely positive experiences, and it's had huge impacts on my music. Because of this, I always tell people to go for it when they have the opportunity to meet someone who inspired them greatly or had a huge impact on their life. What do you think about this? Jack, order, go. It's it's a 50-50. Depends on the person that you're meeting. And uh, if you're coming at it from like a perspective of you share the same talents and passions, then I think, like you said, it could be a rewarding experience. But if you're coming at it from a perspective of I'm just a fan, I'm going to fan fanboy or fan girl over the person, then I think it's uncomfortable and awkward a lot of the time. And it will lead to them being very um, anti-conversationalist with you. That's my perspective. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly preface this because you brought up Yumacon. I wanted to give a, a, a my own personal shout out to the few people who I ran into at Yumacon and said hello. You, you, they were fans of the podcast and very nice people. So if you're listening, thanks for saying hi. But anyway, my perspective on that is it completely depends on the setting. So, uh, Mr. Peter, you mentioned that you met them in a small local setting. That has a lot to do with how you'll interact with them. Because you got to remember, if you're like just passing by them on the street or you see them at a show and they have like a few minutes or they're walking by or any of this and that, you personally don't matter to them. I mean, you're you're their fan <laughs> and they, they love your support and like you. But personally, as an individual, you do not matter. So if you if you can talk to them on a small individual setting and have them get to know you in this and that, then it's great. But, you know, if you're just trying to get something out of passing them by on the street or catching them at the airport or whatever the fuck, then you're going about it the wrong way. And that's when I say don't meet your heroes in that context. Charlie. Yeah, fuck celebrities, man. Good enough. I just hey. don't think it's... Yeah, it's never really worth going out of your way to meet a celebrity. Yeah. Good Kaya. output. Kaya. Yeah, fuck them hard. Okay. Don't meet your heroes. I've I've had nothing but overwhelmingly un underwhelming experiences meeting anyone that I ever Who looked have up you to. Met? Who have you met that you've oh, looked when up I was, to? When I was a kid, I met uh, my favorite football player. You were a okay. kid. And Did he touch you? Yeah. What's he going to talk to you about? <laughs> no, he, I was just like, I'm a huge fan. He's like, I bet you are. And I was like, well, <laughs> well that's right. weird. Well, what if he was having fun? What if he was like, I bet you are? What do you mean? What if he's having fun? <laughs> what does that mean? Of course he wasn't. He's just like, yeah, I bet you are. No. Douchey. Uh, I'm not Fucking douchey. Is that the only that was, famous that, person you've ever met? the worst one. Huh? Who else have you met? Uh, another sports player. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe don't Back. meet sports players. Yeah, may maybe it's fuck, fuck football players, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, what's the Let's next one? one? I'll take this one. Shout out to my squad. Uh, this is from Daniel Halfstone. Shout out to my squad, the all-time shit league We'd all love your podcast and hope to eventually see episode 200. P.S. Jackson, you were right. Jurassic, Tro Jurassic World 2 wasn't really any good. Didn't yeah. both of you say Simple. it wasn't good? What a prediction. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, everyone was, said it. Average. Okay, this is from Brad Alfala. Alf Before I begin, I'd like to say that I, Kaya, Howard, or Son, hereby declare WordPress <laughs> to be the most superior content management system available. He's saying this because I talked shit about WordPress once. It's a turd. Unless you like websites that take 10 seconds to load. Brad continues saying, now here's Brad's message. We're 99% done with my girl's website for now. Check her out at 
atolls.deviantart.com. That's A-T-O-L-L-Z. I don't think you made no, deviant art. Oh, cool. oh, your middle name is not Howard, right? Oh, I never told you guys. No. No, yeah, my, my dad's a Jew. Oh, because I, I find I found it interesting that you have a Turkish name and then all of a sudden there's Howard in there. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Jesus, is your middle Andrew. name actually Howard or is this a guy? Are you I can't even tell anymore. The... Yeah, Jesus. You too? Fuck. Wow. So your, your middle name's not no, Howard. Christopher. His middle name is George. Okay. All right. His middle name is Notch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Notch. George, Notch, yeah. anything. Minecraft whatever. Minecraft was it. huge when he was born. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll read this last one. This one's from Adam. Last one. We says, have like three more. Yeah, scroll down, no. Billy. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll read this third last one. This one's from Adam. In keeping with my promise from last month, I shall continue to educate educate the listeners of this podcast by sharing the next three lines from my uni thesis, Scurvy in His Majesty's Navy. Anson's success earned him a personal invitation to meet with King George II himself. Anson's promotion to the esteemed position of Lord Commissioner of the Admiralty later that year further helped legitimize his voyage as a success. However, there was another facet of Anson's voyage that the public largely ignored, the death toll. Keep it up, boys. Only 29.5 pages left to go. Good Thanks, luck Adam. With that, Andrew. Andrew. Thanks, Adam. Good yeah, luck. I mean, Use I some mean, pronouns, I though, because your sentence is kind of a mess. All right. I'm critiquing. He, you, he you're critiquing? It. Yeah, I'm critiquing his fucking thesis. All right, this is from Lemurian Wolf. He says, Hey, boys, I'm deciding to actually shout something out today. I'd like to shout out my amazing girlfriend and true friend, Angelia, Angelia, she's been my best friend for years and is truly the best. But since she saw how good looking you boys are, stay away from her. Sorry for the <laughs> mush fest. Getquip.com slash official. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, shout out to your for working girlfriend. It in at the end. Yeah. Shout out to both of you. Yeah. I'll take, mm-hmm. I'll take this last one as is tradition. This is from a uh, hoobless. Don't be stupid, be a smarty, come and join the Nazi party. Stand up and be counted, show the world you're a man. Stand up and be counted, go with the Ku Klux Klan. And he, he has a little note here that says, I, Hoobless, personally believe all of these things. There goes that's that super from, chats. Well, that's a, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, from the there producers, goes our YouTube right? uploads, thanks a lot. That's from Wall the Street producers? Journal's gonna come for us. The, the first one is a line from the producers said by... Uh, Mel Brooks, the guy who actually wrote it. The second one, I don't know. Are you sure this that isn't sounds... just a Moon Man song? I don't know the second one, but I do know the first one's from the producers. Mm. Alrighty, we can wrap up there. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of the official podcast. Appreciate everyone for coming around and listening, and thank you to everyone who supports us on patreon.com slash the official podcast. We recorded this episode live in front of a live audience. That's why sometimes you could hear clapping in the background. <laughs> That's uh, over at patreon.com slash the official podcast. Andrew, do you want to say anything? Yeah, thanks. Okay, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Good night.